Hello again everyone. I'm on my annual trip to Painswick Golf Club today. I'm going to look at something different and that is short par fours. Now the question is, is what do you do on a short par four? Do you go with the driver, try and drive the green or get as close as you can? Perhaps leave yourself an awkward pitch in yardage? Or do you lay up and leave yourself a full shot into the green with your favourite wedge? And of course the answer is Yes, you do. What you've got to do is apply your skill set to the yardage of the hole, the hazards on the hole. And if you can do that and stick to it, you can save yourself hundreds of shots over a lifetime of golf and lower your handicap into the bargain. So we're going to play some par fours here and uh, see if we can make up our mind what is the right thing to do? Now the first here is straight uphill and you can't hit the ball beyond what you can see. So the first one is a layup with an iron. And um, once we get up there I'll show you why it's a layup with an iron. But while we go around we'll have a look at the hazards and I'll tell you how I tackle them. I'm not going to try and do anything special today. All I want to do is to shoot my handicap for the par fours on this golf course. Now you may be wondering why I choose to hit an iron up there badly. Why didn't I just pull out the driver? I mean, it's only 220 yards. Even if I'm a little short up the hill, I should be okay, right? Well, not right. Because there's this quarry that awaits you. And it's no bargain the other side of the path either. So, um, So do you want a full shot in or do you want a half shot out of a really awkward lie down there? Right, second hole next. Right, second hole. We have out of bounds down the left. And if you go left and stay in bounds, then you're underneath those trees that you can see on the left. Fairways are hogs back, runs heavily over to the right. And if you can see that gentleman there's a quarry over there, so you could hit driver because it is uphill, but I much prefer the three wood and hanging back. And hitting into the green is no bargain either. By playing less than driver, that is what I was trying to avoid. Oh. Of course you can't miss the green to the right. Over here to the left of the green, it drops down about 30 feet. Equally at the back, it drops down 30 feet.
Well, cautious with the first shot, get it in play, get it nice and safe. Cautious with the second, don't challenge that back flag. Because if you go long, it kind of like, um, I was wrong when I said 30 feet. That's about 60. Anyway, we've made a par. We've survived the hole safely. And this is what this is all about. It's turning all of your short par fours into guaranteed pars by not doing something dumb. Right, third next. Right, the third. I can drive this. Now the quarry here isn't really in play, but there's an ancient sort of like road that runs down this second part. If you go right of that and then the ball just keeps bouncing to the right, you get further away. But I can drive this green. The only problem is, is I can also drive these trees and the long grass down the left. So uh, there's no pars over there. I've looked for them and there aren't any. Right, I left myself 37 yards and as Painswick is known as a inland Lynx golf course, let's play a Lynx type shot. So I've got a nine iron, I'm just going to put it back in my stance and chip and run it. Not the best thing I've ever done, granted. The thing about Painswick is it's not a long golf course, but you've got to use your noggin round here. And um, the only thing that will beat you around here really is yourself. There's no water, there's no bunkers. There is some thick rough and a bit of out of bounds as you'd expect on any golf course. But the only thing that will beat you around here it's your own ego pulling driver everywhere and trying to smash the hell out of the golf course. It's not how you play it. And that's not how you play every short par four. Some short par fours, yeah, you give it a bang because there's plenty of room, but not so much up here. What have I got, about eight to 10 feet for a bird? Wonder what I'd have done if I'd hit driver. Ended up in this crap behind me, perhaps? Well, I didn't quite expect that because uh, last year this green was destroyed by a, uh, a gentleman in his car who decided that this might be a good place to do donuts. But it's recovering quite well. Anyway, this all feeds into getting to single figures, really. You can't make enough birdies, he says making a birdie. Let's come up the bank. You can't make enough birdies to make up for your mistakes. So to get to single figures, you got to get rid of the mistakes. Up the fourth. This time it is driver. Right, the fourth hole. Now I'm way in front of the competition tees. About 40 yards, actually. The green, where's my finger? The green sits in there. Now the only place you can't go is down this road here. There's no pars over there. So if we swing round to the right side of the tee box, we're gonna go up here. We're gonna go well left. Now, I would lay up to give myself a full shot into this green, but you can't see the green if you lay up. So I'm just gonna bang the driver up here as far as I can. It's gonna leave me an awkward yardage, 
but I should be able to see the green and well at least have a view of the flag. Let's see how it goes. I think you can see I've got a problem today. I popped up the driver and I'm digging for potatoes with my short irons. But this damn thing's working anyway. It's pointing in the air. Get down. Now some short par fours are just a conundrum. You can't see anything. There's a bit of fairway out here to the right, but that just gives you a horrible angle to a green that you can't see. So you've just got to go over the top of this. The good news is, is that marker post on top of the hill, where's my finger, there it is. That marker post is only 129 yards away. And how far is the hole in total? It's only 228 from here. So I could, I could go over the top of that with a six iron, but I know there's, there's rubbish beyond that before you actually reach the fairway. So uh, sometimes, regardless of what you think is the right thing to do, there isn't a right thing to do. You've just got to suck it up and hit a decent shot. I just don't know what to go with. Could go three wood. Could go four iron. Mmm. bit of extra concentration there. So I went for the middle ground. I went with a hybrid rather than the three wood or say a four or five iron. And it looks to be in the right direction, but as I only come here once a year, I'm not sure. Right, we're on 13 now. It's 366 yards and it plays uphill, so we want to hit driver, don't we? Well, not really. The quarry over here is 231 yards away, so that's out of bounds and a lost ball. It's 245 to that stand of trees, and you don't want to be tucked up underneath that. It's stroke two, so we all get a shot. So how short can I hit it? and not compromise my chance for a par. And watch out for the road.
Right, number 14. Green is straight in front of us over there. It's 300 yards. It's downhill, it's downwind. And in the summer, I can certainly reach it. But we're back with the out of bounds and the trees down the right. If you go left, it just keeps going further left. Number 16, 279, all downhill. Green itself is on a shelf. We've got the road to go over. We've got an awful lot of scrub and bad places in the foreground. So you are forced to get over the road. Where those two people are walking down there on the right, that is lost ball land. So uh, there's no layup with a five iron or a four iron, really. 5-iron won't even reach the road, so I've got to go bigger than that, so 3-wood or driver. Guy behind me must be late for his tea. He's driven on the green. It's a bit rude, isn't it? I stood up there and waited it, waited for the green to clear and for the tea to clear, just in case I, just in case I hit a really bad shot, and he's just played at me. Oh, Jesus. Go on. Hundred and seventy eight, five iron. 